Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to share the interview process. Why is this so close to my face? Okay, so I'm going to share what the interview process is like at a big tech company or even just as a UX designer. I have done my fair share of interviewing um, with small companies and bigger companies as a UX designer and I thought I would shed light on what that interview process is like. Well, let's say you have, you know, submitted your portfolio, which is a must as a UX designer, you have to have a portfolio, and you have um, been contacted by HR or you know a friend, you got um, referred, and now you have an interview. So usually what happens is um, a recruiter will reach out to you. So this is not like part of the design team. This is like someone who works in HR or someone who's been hired by a company to recruit you or to hire someone and they'll say, okay, hey Amanda, um, how's it going? We'd lo I'd love to jump on a call to talk about the role you applied for as UX designer or said position at said company. So then you're like, okay, great. Like so excited for the opportunity. Um, and you set up a phone call with a recruiter. This has been my experience at small companies as well as large companies. And when I mean large companies, I mean companies like Microsoft, companies like Shopify, and smaller companies, I mean companies like, like the Lottery Corporation, Ritzia, uh, Lululemon, Majuri, like these are the type of ways in which all of the processes have happened. So then what happens is you have a call with the recruiter and that is just really a get to know you. You know, they're not gonna ask you, oh, like what's your favorite way to use Sketch or what's your favorite way to use Figma? Like they're not gonna ask you detailed questions about design. Really all they wanna know is who are you? What is your background? Why are you applying for this role? And they'll tell you a little bit more about the role, which is good because, you know, this is a time for you to kind of just understand, you know, what who they're looking to hire a little bit, like what, what, what they're really trying to like accomplish here by hiring someone. This is important too, to like really get to know the company you're applying for because it's important to like, when they ask you like, well, why did you apply to uh, like Glossier? You're gonna wanna say like, or learn more about Glossier and like their values as a company and like what they do. And then you're gonna wanna be able to answer how that um, relates to you. That's gonna be your initial call. And sometimes people have asked me about salary and sometimes people haven't, which I mean, you have a right to ask, right? Like you have a right to be like, what is the um, range in which this salary is for this position or or like the rate because you know interviewing for UX specifically is a long process and it can be time consuming and sometimes you know you don't want it to be worth too time consuming from your life if it's not even gonna help you like live your life you know what I mean or like if it's not gonna be like an upgrade from your current position if you're looking for more money and all this stuff so I know some people don't agree with that like when i was working at microsoft they didn't tell me or when i was interviewing microsoft they didn't tell me the salary expectations till the very end so that's like literally like um, two months later they told me the salary expectations which is a risk but if you're so passionate about that company and you really want to work at that company then does salary really matter you know like there are other things that could just matter so much to you that salary doesn't so sometimes people talk about it sometimes people don't so usually this conversation depends how like long it's booked for but it can last anywhere from like um 20 to like 40 minutes and it's just literally a phone call and yeah or a video call so then after the call with the recruiter she'll tell you what or sorry they'll tell you what the interview process is like at that company so they'll be like okay like this is how we usually interview you know you have a round of interviews it'll start with meeting the design team or it'll start with the manager and then you'll do this step and then you'll do this step so they'll create the framework in which your next interview process is like which is great because it sets expectations right like this is how long it's going to be for you and this is what you're gonna need to do to get through this interview process. And then they'll send you a follow-up email and that follow-up email will be a schedule of your next following interviews or it could just be a schedule of like the next interview. It depends what company. When I've interviewed at bigger companies, it's like, okay, like here's the breakdown of, we want your availability and then they reply and they give you a breakdown of like the next two weeks and what that process is like. Or it could just be like, okay, like we'd like to get you meeting with the hiring manager. So it can be one or the other. So next is usually the hiring manager and then you have about a half an hour phone call with the hiring manager and this is great because they know, you know, more about how the team is structured, their design processes, the vision for the company. Like they know this is a great time to not only for them to interview you, but for you to interview them, right? Like it's, uh, interviewing is a two-way street and I feel like that's something I've definitely 
learned through interviewing at Microsoft was that, you know, I'm not only, they're not only looking to invest in me, but I'm looking to invest in them. And is that the company that fits me? So this is an important time to answer some questions that you have about your future there or what the team does. And it's just a great conversation really. Um, and then he'll tell you, then the manager will tell you, this is what our team works on. And this is why we're looking for a position to help us with whatever. And sometimes they'll ask you questions, you know, deeper questions. Like they might ask you like more design related questions. Like how, what does your team make up at your current company? What are your processes? Like, do you know what like agile is like do you work like that like how closely do you work with your developer how closely do you work with stakeholders more senior positions it'll be like what is your impact on the vision and the future of like um that product's life and like where it's going like how do you manage stakeholder conversations how do you um work towards figuring out what you work on next like it's all these kind of bigger questions about how you work what your responsibilities are at your current role and what you're like looking for and then they'll also ask you like some people will just like ask you like a little bit about yourself you know like where do you live like what do you like to do like sometimes the hiring manager here will go through your portfolio and other times they won't so it really depends on the company but i would be prepared to walk someone through my portfolio at this interview um I've had experiences where they don't touch my portfolio at all. They don't talk about my portfolio at all. They would rather do that with a broader team. And I've had experiences where they ask me to walk them through multiple projects. Half an hour isn't really a ton of time to, you know, answer questions about the role as well as get into portfolio work. So it's, you kind of have to be quick with how you're explaining yourself, but um, be prepared to pull up your portfolio and walk them through it right then and there, or be prepared not to, it could go either way. So let's say they do walk you through your portfolio, then you're answering, you know, you're, sh you're sharing your screen. I've only ever had mine. Actually, no, I've, I've, no, I've only ever done my remote and I've shared my screen. I've gone them through my portfolio pieces. Um, I, you know, talk them through my projects from like start to, to end in development or like other things I've done. And it's a really great opportunity to show your work, to talk about your work, talk about your process. It's, it's like literally anything you can't answer just by answering people's questions verbally will come out when you review your portfolio. So it's good. And yeah, then after that, if you don't review your portfolio, sometimes they'll book a portfolio review for you to do it with a broader group. So sometimes you're doing that with like PMs or there might even be like other designers in that team and you're in a, and you're sharing your portfolio to like a bigger group. I've had that before. Um, or you're just doing it like to the manager. It really just depends. And really next, what I've had is either a presentation or a design challenge. So I've I've been asked to do both. When I worked for an e-commerce company, they asked me to design, like recreate something on their website, like a problem, like solve it. I have mixed vibes about this because I don't know, you know, it, it's, a lot of effort. Some people would say it's free label labor. Some people are against design challenges for that reason, for the fact that they think it's like I'm being paid. I'm not being paid to give you my advice on like how to solve something for your website. But I mean, I think if you're in your earlier years of your career and you don't have a lot of design experience, then doing a design challenge, you should be like thrilled by because you're excited to even get a job at a company. You know what I mean? Like when I was interviewing for this e-commerce company and they wanted me to do a design challenge, I was like, fuck it, I don't even care. I'm just gonna do the goddamn challenge because I want the job so bad. But now that I have a little more experience and a few companies have asked me to do a design challenge, it makes me kind of like, I don't know, I just really question whether I really wanna like spend the time interviewing at that company or like what, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's a lot of work, you know, you're taking, the challenge and you're either taking it home, like they give you a challenge and you take it home and you have like a weekend to do it or a night to do it and you create this big presentation for it. Or um, other people like to do whiteboard sessions. I've never participated in one. I was invited to one, but I stopped my interview with this company. But, um, and that whiteboarding is when you're solving a challenge with other designers live. So like you join a Zoom call or you go in person and you're whiteboarding how you would solve for X, Y, and Z which is intimidating as F, like you gotta mentally prepare for that and know how to like solve problems and collaborate and pull in other people when you need them. And yeah, it's a lot of pressure. So it's fine, I mean, it's totally doable. Um, do I think everyone works well under and like you can really see how someone will work at your company through a whiteboarding challenge? I don't really think so personally. Like, yes, we have in the real world when we design like whiteboarding experiences and we have like, you know, like different workshops that we host as UX designers for stakeholders and we're doing whiteboarding, but is it ever like to that level of pressure? I don't know. So I don't know if I agree with that personally. I mean, it is part of the hiring process. Once you uh, do the design challenge, then you complete it and you create a presentation. 
Um, so I've presented both results from a design challenge and I've also presented um, case studies from my portfolio. So either way, it's a presentation of your work, okay? So then you, it's usually an hour long. They usually send the invite to like a lot of people. It's PMs, it's designers, it could be developers, it could be different stakeholders. And they join this meeting. And what your job is to do is to spend like 45 minutes presenting to them like your case, either two case studies or your design challenge results. And I would say if it's an hour long, I would do 45 minutes and leave 15 minutes at the end for questions, but you have to create this presentation. And this is the presentation which I did at Microsoft about two case studies. And I literally put my life on hold for like a week, like didn't talk to anyone and just like worked on it for a week just to create this presentation. And I memorized the fuck out of it, not memorized it, cause you don't want to go up there and sound like you're a robot reading off a screen, but I got very comfortable with and felt very confident in what I was presenting to the point where I could answer questions when they came up. That's super important. So you really have to present this. Uh, this is gonna take like your most time is getting, nailing down this presentation, creating a framework for this presentation about how you should even structure it, which I could definitely do a video on if anyone wanted me to walk them through like a structure of like the presentation that's, that I did for Microsoft. I don't think I would, you know, present the same presentation, but if you want to see how I structured the presentation, I'm more than happy to share that. But yeah, so you're really gonna want to um, practice the fuck out of this section because this is gonna make or break you. This shows your skill set. This shows how you did what you did, and you know it's important at this level. Is, again, like I could go on for this for so long. Oh look, my dog, love it. I could go on for so long, but it's really important to show, you know, not only your finished product, as you probably know this if you're a UX designer, but you know your whole process. So. What went wrong? What went right? What would you do differently? Like that's what they want to know because that's that's life, you know. Like when you're working on a project and you're when you're approaching something with an agile methodology, you're definitely thinking about okay, like do we need to pivot now because of these results? Do we need to change this because of this? Do we like you know that that's the nature of working as a UX designer and they want to see that from you. So it's important to show that like being like oh yeah we actually decided to not go with what we launched because of results from user testing or AB testing like that's a valid reason and that's that's a smart decision that you chose to change your direction and that those should all be included in that presentation then after you present and you answer the questions sometimes that will be the end or there'll be follow-ups so I've had that be the end and then be contacted by a recruiter with an offer or I've been you know denied that's definitely part of um, interviewing or um, then you go into at bigger companies they do a series of one-on-ones so you present this hour long presentation and then you usually have a full day or you have a half day and it's a series of one-on-ones. So um, it can be like eight hours long, it can be five hours long, it can be really time consuming, but it's important and it's a bunch of one-on-ones. So you're gonna have one-on-ones with other managers, one-on-ones with researchers, people in the design team, and usually they're half an hour long and you're just talking to them. They're, ans they're answering questions, they're asking questions about that presentation that you did or they're asking questions about something they've seen on your resume or something they've seen on your portfolio and they're just getting to know you more like how can you collaborate with the team how will you be able to collaborate with other pods because you know like a lot of company a lot of companies are structured by these like little pods as ux designers um how do you work in agile environments do you use re user research to support your facts like all these questions about your design process design systems right like why you even got into design they want to know like who will if you be a good cultural fit as well as a good designer itself and there's also questions um you know that you can ask like this is an important time for not only like i mentioned for them to interview you, but for you to interview them. And you ask them, you know, like, why are you at this company? Why do you like this company? Why are you choosing to stay? What are your, what, what do you enjoy about working here? What do you d don't enjoy about working here? Um, where do you see your future at this company? Where do you see the future of this product at this company? There's a lot to uncover in half an hour. So sometimes you can go the full half an hour or sometimes it doesn't go the full half an hour. But I would say it's very important to have questions written out at this time to ask them because it's a mutual thing, right? Like it's not just them interviewing you. But it's great, right? Because then you can see the makeup of the team. You can see if you fit in that team. You know, when I did this process, this was a very similar process to what I did at Microsoft. It was great because not only did I, I interviewed with two different teams, right? So I was able to, I was able to just learn about each team and how they work and find the best fit for me. And, it, and, and that's something I really like about working at a company that has so many products, because I work at Microsoft right now, I'm not sure if I said that. But that's what I really liked about working at a company with so many products is that like you can work on like, 
I don't know, uh, Microsoft Outlook for like a few years and then decide that, you know, you want to spice it up, then you can stay within Microsoft and work in another product team. And I'm sure that's the same as Facebook. Like, you know, say you want work on Instagram for a bit and all of a sudden you're kind of done with working on like Instagram, like ads or whatever, or like Instagram chat and you want to work on Facebook. You could probably talk to someone about working on Facebook and get, you know, over there and work on the Facebook team. Like it's, it's really cool about these big companies is that you are very limited. There's so much you can do and there's so much you can take your career that it's a really great opportunity. But anyways, so after you do your one-on-ones, your last one-on-one -on -one of that day will usually be with the hiring manager. And I've done this with two big tech companies and um, that'll just be, you know, recapping the day. Again, the same type of thing, like answering questions they haven't even seen, like haven't you haven't answered from other companies. I mean, you haven't answered, asking questions about your portfolio, asking questions about the presentation, asking any type of question. And then after that, after you spend the long day, you'll probably be mentally exhausted. I remember I did this and I literally just like stared at a wall for six hours later because I was so mentally drained because it's absolutely exhausting. I swear to God, the interview process at some of these big companies is very tiring and it definitely challenges, it challenged the hell out of me. I was like, if I can't do this well, I was like, I need to go back to school or something because this is like literally testing my knowledge and everything. It was like, you know, like, like, why did you decide on this button? Why did you decide on this? Well, like it's millions of questions thrown at you, which is great, honestly. It's even if you don't get, this is what I told myself, even if I don't get either position, this is still amazing experience, interview experience for me. This is teaching me so much about what it's like to interview at any of these companies or as a designer as a whole. So it was incredible, honestly, it's really incredible. Then, you'll hear from the recruiter. So I've always heard from the recruiter the next day for um, the stuff because you know, they're taking a lot of, they're spending a lot of time. Think about all those people that interviewed you. Think about how much they get paid in like an hour and they've invested that in you. So they're already pretty invested. So this is the time in which they're ready to place an offer, especially if you're interviewing at other companies. And if, sometimes I'll ask you if you're interviewing with other companies and you have the right to say yes, like I am, just so they know like, yo, I got interest elsewhere. But this is when they're gonna give you an offer. And they're gonna present to you the offer about like whatever company and how it's broken down. If you're a contractor, it's gonna be like the hourly rate. Well, okay, back up here. I guess I didn't mention this earlier, but like this has been like my interview process for like getting hired as like a full-time employee because contractors, when you're getting hired as a contractor, it's very different. You literally, contractors, it's a very much of a shorter interview process because you're just getting hired, like you, when you're contracting, you're getting contracting by like hourly rate. They're not looking to invest in you as an employee. They're not gonna give you, and that's just the nature of contracting for full time, but they're not gonna give you, you know, like they don't see the career trajectory of like you there. It's more so just like, okay, like what can you, we see you do great work, like let's get you hired and can you help us with this great work? And that's just the difference, right? It's the difference of nature of working in different, and some people love contracting. I know some people that love it. They love not having to do the nitty gritty. They love not having to do like, you know, the career goals and all that stuff, like, and the extra things that come with like a full-time employee. And I have people who, who like that stuff. So it really depends like what you're valuing, but I've done both. I've enjoyed different aspects of both, but my contracting interviewing experience has been way shorter. It's pretty much like interview with the hiring manager where you walk through your presentation and then like you get hired. It's like, it's very, it's pretty short for me. Um, my experience, but being full time, it is like a bit of a longer interview process. But then you get the offer and you, you know, you negotiate or you don't. I've negotiated a few times and I haven't negotiated. It's really like what you're comfortable with. Um, I read an article on Blind. If you're ever looking for information on like um, tech salaries and like what people make elsewhere and like total compensation packages, check out the app Blind because it's really useful and it gives you information about um, what people get paid where and what, and you can actually post, I didn't do this personally, but some people actually post their offers anonymously and say like, is this a good offer? And people from that company are like, no, or they're like, yes, take it. Like, I don't know, if you're just looking to see like what other people are getting paid in what company at what location, it's interesting. So um, I downloaded Blind when I was looking at um, accepting an offer or uh, just even considering an offer. And it's a great way to just see like market industry, what other people are making. And uh, yeah, you can negotiate. Um, negotiating is a really normal thing in any industry. You're allowed to negotiate your rate. You're not, you're allowed to negotiate anything. 
Um, so you can negotiate or you can uh, sign the offer and then you either go through a background check and get hired or you get hired right, right there depending on what company you work for. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about what it's like to interview for a full-time position really at um, as a UX designer. It's a very long process, it's very rewarding when you feel like when you get an offer and you, you, you know, you go through all of that, like it's so rewarding. My camera died, that's so rude. Um, if you have any questions or comments or wanna know um, more about um, the interview process as a UX designer or anything about UX or product design, same thing, um, then uh, ask me down below and I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing well and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.